grace be unto you in peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Now you really didn't come here today to hear the words of the 22nd Psalm who we heard from Steve King on Monday, Thursday. But now you've heard them and you're really trying to figure out why the victor, vicar is starting his sermon off as if we are still walking in the valley of the shadow of death. It is true that we often hear the words of lament from the 22nd Psalm and in the days leading up to the Passion of Christ, and we are truly in a bad place because Jesus is going to the cross. In Psalm 22, there is suffering, stumbling. We are being chased by evil, and it seems that there is no one there to show us the way. We are in need of a guide or a companion. We are in need of a shepherd, for we are longing for abundant life a life where we will not be in want. We are yearning for a life with Jesus, but we have just experienced the loss of him whom we loved. We are wandering and lost. We are sad and suffering, and we need someone in our lives who will take us away from the pain of the cross. The Lord is my shepherd. Thus begins our new journey with Jesus at our side. Jesus walks with us into the green pastures, beside the still waters, and guides us along the right pathways. Even in the bad times, especially those that we are experiencing now with us being apart and lamenting that we cannot be in communion with one another. Jesus is walking with us through the valley of the shadow of death, and we will not be afraid. We take solace in the knowledge that his rod and his staff will comfort and guide us. But the difficult thing for us to wrap our heads around is the fact that we are constantly on the go and we are ever walking through those green pastures and beside the still waters. And we still have those valleys in our lives that pose us challenges and take us back to the words in the 22nd Psalm. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But these are the exact times where we need to realize our laments, cry out to the Lord, and really know that through our faith, God is with us every step of the way. Psalm 22 layers lament upon lament, with a few words of trust and God's deliverance sprinkled in. The psalm voices the increasing desperation of a community that's been encircled by enemies and whose life is all but gone. I know that this is a place, this is not a place that I believe any one of us wishes to dwell in or to become so entrenched that we cannot get ourselves out of the worry and despair of our times. And the time of lament may be overtaking us now because we are isolated, we feel alone, and we can't seem to see an opening in the gate. The Lord is my shepherd. We are provided with a shepherd against this despair and lament where Psalm 23 delightedly proclaims again and again for us trust in the Lord. It's if the, it's as if the desperation of Psalm 22 is matched by the exuberant trust found in Psalm 23. Yet we must understand that the exuberance does not erase our pain, but are instead assurances of God's care in our lives. The words are a balm of love applied to the sorrows, griefs, and daily concerns in our lives. But we must be mindful that the presence of God does not always erase this pain and this suffering 
we may be experiencing here on this earthly world. It is for us to understand that Jesus tends us and guides us into right relationship with each other and with God to experience joy. In the psalm, the paths of righteousness do not lead directly from green pastures to the house of the Lord. Our journey with Christ takes us through countless green pastures. But there will also be times when we are in the darkest valleys with no seemingly good way out. Jesus shows us the path. He leads us right to the cross and beyond. And although that path may not always be clear or seem safe, the Good Shepherd comforts us in the goodness and certainty that in doing so, we will walk with God beside the still waters. I shall not be in want. And this may be one of the most confusing statements of the psalm, but it's more appropriately translated for us that we shall not be in want as opposed to I shall not want. God provides everything to us and we are blessed to be satisfied with abundant life, which is ultimately defined as our relationship with God. This is the path that Jesus is walking with us, guiding us to and has been pointing us to throughout our Easter story. Jesus' mission is not for us to be in want. It is to restore us to right relationship with God. The 23rd Psalm is that roadmap for us that deliver us from the lament in the 22nd Psalm, the passion and away from the disappointment in losing Christ. For we have not lost Christ as we have been given the Holy Spirit to be in our hearts, our minds, and our entire being allowing goodness and mercy to follow us all the days of our lives. During the Passion, we were in a place where we were ready to give up, and some of us may be feeling similarly in this time of isolation. And the lament of the 22nd Psalm has us in a place of fear and abandonment where evildoers are relentlessly pursuing us. But Psalm 23 insists that we can, and we can trust in deliverance in the midst of evil. Deliverance is true and it's real. Whatever preys upon us individually and as communities will not defeat us because God is with us. And imagine if we lived as if we really knew this truth as if we really feared no evil, because our trust is in God. Imagine a place where we are no longer being driven by our fear. Imagine if we, the vulnerable flock of the shepherd, do ourselves forever to be pursued by the goodness and mercy of God. In response to our lament of the passion, Psalm 23 promises the restoration to goodness that God the shepherd provides. Green pastures, still waters, a rod to protect, and a staff to guide. All of this restoring our soul. The table set in the presence of those enemies refreshes our parched throat with an overflowing cup God is the host at a feast of thanksgiving, and the sufferer, us, are the honored guests. Our heads are anointed with oil. And in response to the sufferers wasting away in Psalm 22, Psalm 23 deliver us, delivers us into the overflowing refreshment of God's presence. The good news is that this is when we hear our shepherd call out to us. We are guided through the gate, and he provides for our salvation in the time of thieves and bandits and pandemic. God comes to us, and we are entreated to listen for God's call, 
for each and every one of us is known to the shepherd. We don't want because God provides, takes care of all our needs, and erases all of our fear because we are in the presence of the Good Shepherd. When we welcome God into our hearts and realize that our, abund our abundant life is God, hope is overflowing like the cup. Our abundant life is not that of personal possession, wealth, or prosperity. Our abundant life is knowing that the Lord is our shepherd, calling us to walk with him no matter the circumstances in our lives. Here, the Good Shepherd assuring us that we shall not be in want. Even though we may be in a valley of darkness, we are guided to the path of the still waters and the green pastures. And we are given the hope that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.